that uh, people say privately all the time and not on TV all very often. Something really bad is going to happen. Okay, shit's about to hit the fan in this country. Georgia election interference case against former President Trump and 18 others. The judge has severed the cases of two of those defendants who will now be tried separately from the former president and the rest of the group. Prosecutors say they'll also hand over the names of 30 unindicted co-conspirators to defense counsel for all 19 co-defendants. I want to bring in ABC News editorial producer John Santucci and ABC News legal contributor Brian Buckmeyer for more. John, as you were watching, you were saying this is not a good day for the Fulton County DA. Bad. I mean, Fannie Willis wasn't there, but you got to imagine, Diane, she's throwing things against the wall based on this. Hey there, guys. Welcome to the channel. So it's rare, but there's actually some positive news for President Donald Trump. And of course, because it's positive, most of the media is ignoring it. So we all know Democrats are 100% determined to prevent this guy from ever becoming president again. And they will use any means necessary, which is why, and the only reason why, he's currently under four-week indictments, including the one from Fulton County, Georgia, led, of course, by District Attorney Fannie Willis, who you guys all remember, literally campaigned on destroying this man's life. So now she's actually going to task on it. So unfortunately for her, she just had a pretty good setback uh, in the RICO case against Donald Trump and about 19 or 20 other co-defendants, however many there are. So the more you actually look at this, the more it looks like an attempt to embarrass Trump on television in front of the world and really less about violations. You know, she's pushing for a quick trial to convict the guy and have him literally in jail by the time the 2024 election happens and literally trying to use his own right to a speedy trial against him, which is not how it works. And uh, obviously there's going to be lots of legal beagles in the comments to tell us that we're wrong about that. But guys, that is not how it works. So anyway... A Superior Court judge in uh, Georgia, Scott McAfee, ruled in favor of Trump's two co-defendants, Kenneth Chesterborough and Cindy Powell. We all know her. So they requested uh, their own speedy trials and to be separated from the other 17. So what this means, basically, is that those trials are going to start in October. And because those are starting in October, basically guarantees that Trump's is going to be much, much later than that. And another interesting thing that this does for Trump, well, it's going to allow him and his team to see in open court the tactics and the arguments that the prosecution makes um, with the exact same charges. So, you know, this is such an advantage that the always fair and always balanced people over at ABC and CNN are actually talking about it. So take a look at this. But before we do, guys, thanks to everyone that's been subscribing and leaving such great comments. We really, really, really appreciate the support. If you haven't already, please join our community. We're having a lot of fun. And help us with the algorithm. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Most importantly, share the channel. Check this out. This new. So I just, Elliot, just straight to you. Now there are going to be two separate trials. One, what does that mean for the timing of all this? Does that mean that Trump's trial, which is the one that a lot of people are waiting for, will go after this? Right. And we will see, they will be able to watch all of this un unfold? Yeah. So first of all, this is major news. This means we're going to have at least two separate trial groups, at least two. First one, Chesbro and Sidney Powell, currently scheduled for late October. I put a question mark on whether we're actually going to see a trial in October. And then a later group, the other 17 defendants, which very importantly includes Donald Trump. This means two big things to me as a practical matter. One, Donald Trump's trial in Georgia, the one that will be televised, is way, way, way far out. I think very, very likely to be pushed past the 2024 election after the 2024 election. The second thing is, this is a big strategic and tactical advantage for Donald Trump and those other 16, because you know what they get to do now? They get to sit in the gallery and watch the whole earlier trial. They get to see every government witness. They get to see all the cross-examination, all the documents, and make notes and adjust accordingly. So big positive development for Donald Trump and the other 16 here. I don't think it counts. Georgia election interference case against former President Trump and 18 others. The judge has severed the cases of two of those defendants who will now be tried separately from the former president and the rest of the group. Prosecutors say they'll also hand over the names of 30 unindicted co-conspirators 
to defense counsel for all 19 co-defendants. I want to bring in ABC News editorial producer John Santucci and ABC News legal contributor Brian Buckmeyer for more. John, as you were watching, you were saying this is not a good day for the Fulton County DA. Bad. I mean, Fannie Willis wasn't there, but you got to imagine, Diane, she's throwing things against the wall based on this hearing. So let's start where you just began. So first, the team for the federal pro the prosecutors down there had been arguing, keep everybody together, keep all 19, because really what we learned today, we're going to have a show this fall, and then we're going to have a repeat performance next spring, which makes it incredibly difficult for prosecutors. A great win for Donald Trump and others that did not want to be part of this speedy trial case. I can tell you sitting here with you, just texting with some of the attorneys involved in the other defendants, celebrating. Yay, victory. This is everything they wanted was to take more time and slow this down. What's interesting though, this ruling by the judge about unsealing the 30 unindicted co-conspirators, it's fascinating that you then saw prosecutors jump in. So whoa, wait a second, if you're gonna share this with everybody, give a protective order. It's duplicative to what we've seen in the other cases of the former president, both the special counsel cases and the Manhattan case. Put gag orders, don't talk, because one of the things, Diane, that we've seen that the courts and prosecutors in all four of these cases involving the former president are extremely concerned about is witness intimidation. And it's not so much even Donald Trump and his team going after anybody, but look at what we saw after Fulton County and that indictment and the names of the grand jurors that were involved there. Those people came out and told ABC News and many other outlets that they were targeted, they were attacked, their homes constantly getting visitors, phone calls. So this case is obviously high pressure, high intensity, but just to see real quickly there, even though the DA clearly lost, is, well, wait a second, got to protect these people and their identities. <laughs> so yeah, man, that is definitely 100%, without a doubt, a win for Donald Trump and his legal team for several reasons, but mainly because, you know, it slows down the whole process and it gives them just much more time to prepare. And according to CNN's chief legal analyst, Eli Honig, who actually I really, really like, this is a super bright guy, and really he has been basically the only real reality check for these crazies when they fantasize and basically do mental masturbation live on TV when they're talking about Trump indictments and Trump trials. You know, this, according to him, could push the elect, could push the uh, trial all the way past the election. And if Trump's Georgia trial, which will be televised, by the way, is pushed towards after the election, that's a game changer, man. It removes a massive advantage for whoever the Democratic nominee is going to be. You know, because part of their strategy, as usual, is to distract Americans, to distract the voter. Well, I'm going to remind you, they think are stupid. They want to distract you with Trump trials so that you don't look at the border, you don't look at the economy, you don't look at inflation, you don't look at billions and billions of dollars going to foreign wars. They want you to focus on the Trump trial. And apologies to OJ, but guys, the Georgia trial will be the most televised trial in world history, for sure. And, you know, of course, that would be a huge advantage for the Democrats. And especially if Trump is convicted, obviously that hits him hard, real hard in the general, but that's a long shot, you know. But here's the interesting part. The same CNN legal analyst said that if Trump wins, there's probably no way that the Georgia case will even happen if he's president of the United States because that's just so many other legal hurdles for the state of Georgia. So yeah, this is a massive win for Trump. And while all of this is going on, more legal garbage. Jack Smith has asked a judge again for a tighter gag order on Trump, basically trying to tamp down on what he can or can't say about his cases. And of course, the beacon of hope for all liberal democracy, basically the hope for all the world, MSNBC's Nicole Wallace, goes into a full and total awesome meltdown over this gag order because she thinks Trump is going to cause... She doesn't actually think it. She doesn't believe it. But she wants her viewers to believe that Trump is going to cause massive violence with his truth social posts. And uh, no matter what happens, it's going to be mostly peaceful. We can assure you guys. But let's have a look at her actually losing her mind. Uh, people say privately all the time and not on TV all very often, something really bad is going to happen. Okay, shit's about to hit the fan in this country. Fox News had to veer away from a lunatic spewing hatred and death threats for Democratic officials in New York because of the migrant mm -hmm. caucus. Everyone is on, uh, I don't even know the word. Everyone is knows that we're walking into something hideous and no one will do anything. Mm -hmm. I refuse to believe that nothing can be done. 
These are people getting their information in part because of the vacuum being created by people with, I don't even know if we call it a spine anymore. That might be an insult to spines. But there are still people out there with followings. He can go out and, and here's, here's the, what I want to ask you. Mm -hmm. When something happens, what do you want to be able to tell your kids and grandkids you did? You good with nothing? You good with, I didn't do anything because I didn't think anyone would listen to me. Trump tweeted something mean about me someday because you did something. I tried to do something. Where are all of the Republicans who still have little slivers of a following in the cesspool that is the MAGA base? Well, look, all of the red lights are blinking about what is about to happen. And I think that's what makes what Jack Smith is doing so important, because he's saying, OK, um, right now, you know, this is a stress test for the entire criminal justice system. Look, the Republicans are not going to step up. They are not going to raise their hands. We know that Mitch McConnell is not going to come out of his bunker and say what he said after January 6th. But what I think was so powerful about this document, which I've just skimmed, is the way that Jack Smith basically sounds all of those alarms and says, look, this is not just theoretical. Look what he has done in the past. Look what he is doing right now. You know, and I know that the word, you know, gag order is going to be thrown around a lot. But what he's really saying is that Donald Trump needs to be held to the same standard of, of that any other criminal defendant would be held to, but also to alert the court to the extent of this campaign to discredit and attack and demean judges and jurors and prosecutors to discredit the entire process. This is not just one trial among any. Donald Trump is not just one defendant among any. This is a former president of the United States who is prepared uh, to call out the Furies, who is prepared to stoke violence, to tell people, you know, come because it will be wild. And, you know, you, you know again, um, with all of these red lights blinking, um, the silence that we've gotten used to I think um, becomes less defensible because what happens in 2024 um, could be horrific. It is likely to be horrific. And all of the people that enabled it and rationalized it and looked the other way um, ought to be held to account in some way, at least in their conscience, if not politically. So yeah, poor, poor Nicole, man. I mean, you know the craziest thing there? Left-wing media and Democrats they're showing off their complete and total double standard again. You know, they want to silence Trump's free speech after encouraging and even supporting actions that literally undermined our justice system. They supported people violating federal law outside the homes of Supreme Court justices. They supported intimidation of jurors during the Kyle Rittenhouse and the Derek Chauvin trials. You know, these people are so freaking insane that they actually believe that Trump is a domestic terror threat. At the same time, they completely ignore left-wing extremists that are responsible for probably more political violence in the U.S. now than any time since the 1960s. It's crazy, man. It's crazy. And she keeps saying stuff like, it's going to hit the fan, it's going to hit the fan. But the ironic thing is that if it does hit the fan, it is absolutely 100% her fault. They're the ones creating these motives, creating these opportunities, creating these narratives. You know, they clutch their pearls over right-wing threats that never materialized. And they ignore or completely play apologists for actual left-wing violence. That's just crazy, man. You cannot make that stuff up. But anyway, guys, that's just my take. Let me know in the comments yours. I can't wait to hear them. And if you haven't already, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Most importantly, share the channel. We'll see you in the next one.